interference by a plane parallel film when illuminated by a plane wave. So, first let us see how to study the interference for this parallel film. So, this is my parallel film. Suppose I say oil, this is the film and what we do? We place a converging lens here and a source at its focus. So, as a, as a result we will get a plane wave front and now we place a beam splitter. Beam splitter means its role is to reflect light. It reflects light like this. So, you see this is a plane wave front and this is a direct incident. So, this is called beam splitter. Now, what happens? This is near normal incidence. So, this ray will get reflected from this surface and again one goes this and again it gets reflected. That means, in this way it passes here. So, this is called beam splitter. Now, this beam splitter reflects some light and it transmits some light. So, this reflected light is transmitted and this is our screen. It may be a photographic, photographic screen or it may be your camera or it may be your eye. If you are observing, your eye acts as a screen. This is beam splitter this is commonly used everywhere. Now, you see this is the mechanism used in the experimental study of the interference due to parallel film. Now, we are going to mathematical, mathematically calculate that if this distance is t and refractive index of this film is mu, then what thickness and what combination of mu will give us constructive and destructive interference, what is the fringe width and all such things. So, now let us calculate the fringes, the nature of fringage. So, in order to study the nature of fringage, let us see this is a ray incident at some angle and this ray is reflected here. Some portion is transmitted here and again it is here reflected and here goes on. So, this is called A. If I drop this is B, this is C and if I drop a perpendicular this will be D. So, these are the first two reflections. I will call it R 1 first reflection wave second and here we will see the interference pattern. So, let us calculate the path difference between the two rays R 1 and R 2. So, path difference, path difference between the two reflections is equal to that is two reflected waves is equal to that is A C mu times A C plus B C minus A D. You see this second reflected ray has traveled additional distance of A C plus C B in a medium mu whose thickness is given as T. So, the optical path length becomes mu A C plus B C and it has traveled some distance A D. So, this is the path difference between these two waves. So, let us calculate 2 times mu A C minus A D this is delta x 2 times mu a c. Let us drop a perpendicular here. This is angle of incidence i, this is r. So, this becomes r, this becomes r and this is i 90 minus this is i. So, this is this is reflected ray. So, this is i. So, this is i. So, this is 90 minus i. So, this becomes i angle. So, a c a c. You see this triangle a c b let us call this e. 
So, in this triangle we see A C this is C E C E by A C is equal to cos R. C E is simply T is equal to T by A C. We want A C A C. So, A C becomes T by cos R minus A D. Now, what is A D? A D is in this triangle A D B A D in terms of let us write A B. So, this is A D by A B we will get as sin i sin i. So, we want A B. So, A D simply written as A B sin i this can be further written as mu t by cos r minus. Now, a b is again 2 times a e sin i that is 2 mu t by cos r minus 2 a e. Now, a e again you see this triangle a e is there you see this triangle a e by a e by t is equal to tan r. So, we want this is A e. So, this is T tan r. Tan r means sin r by cos r and this is sin i. So, now let us simplify further it. So, this is here we can also write sin i sin i is equal to mu sin r. So, simply sin i is equal to mu sin r. So, it will be 2 mu t by cos r minus sin i is mu sin r 2 mu t sin r means sin square r by cos r. So, again you take common 2 mu t by cos r 2 mu t by cos r common i get 1 minus sin square i. So, thus this further becomes 2 mu t by cos r into cos square r is equal to mu t cos r. So, we got this path difference delta x is equal to. So, we got the path difference is 2 mu t cos r. This is the path difference we have calculated between the two reflected waves. Now, once I got part difference, now we can easily see when the constructive and destructive interference will take place. So, let us see case 1. In case 1 here n 1 is less than n and n 1 n is suppose I take n 2 is greater that means, in n is greater than this medium and this is greater than this medium. So, this is the n 2 is the densest medium, this is somewhat lower than this and this is the least medium. Now, when this ray goes on like this, it gets reflected then again it gets transmitted again reflection again transmission. So, since this is a denser medium than this, so there is a phase shift of pi taking place here and since n 2 is also greater than n, so there is a phase shift of pi taking place here. So, at both locations there is a phase shift of pi. So, the only part difference between these two is because of the geometrical part difference created. So, here since the reflection at both the surfaces surfaces is from a denser medium denser medium so so there is a phase shift of pi in both rays 
whenever a wave is reflected from a denser medium, it gets inverted, there is a phase shift of pi. So, both rays have been shifted by pi, thus, thus if delta x that is the path difference 2 n t n t cos r is equal to n lambda, then constructive interference takes place and there is a brightness brightness. If path difference becomes 2 n t cos r, let us write m because this already has 2 m plus 1 m plus 1 lambda y 2, then destructive interference takes place and there will be a minima. Minima means the field will appear to be dark and maxima means it will appear to be bright. This is the case when this is the densest medium and this is somewhat lesser than this and this is the least denser medium. Now, let us see another case, case 2, where n is greater than n 1 and it is also greater than n 2. That means, this is the densest medium, this is rarer than this, this is also rarer than this. In this case, when this ray is being reflected, there is a phase shift of pi because this is denser medium and when this reflected from here, there is no phase shift, no phase shift because whenever a wave is reflected from a rarer medium, no phase shift takes place. So, here, here the phase shift, phase shift of pi takes place only at the first surface. So, what happens? Since there is no phase shift here, there is a phase shift here pi. So, when delta x is equal to 2 n t cos r is equal to m lambda, then destructive interference takes place takes place and when delta x is equal to 2 n t cos r is equal to 2 m plus 1 lambda y 2, then we have constructive interference. So, for near normal incidence, this cos r will be equal to 1. So, 2 n t will be the only part difference. So, this is the way in which interference due to reflected light takes place in thin films. Now, let us see how interference due to transmitted light takes place. Now, case third, let us take up is interference, interference due to transmitted light, lighter web, light web. So, here we have a film, this is a parallel film, this light is transmitted and then this portion is reflected, again this gets transmitted. So, here this is our screen and this is the interference pattern study. Now, you see here, this is suppose n 1, this is n, this is n 2. So, this ray goes on here and this is the here wave is reflected. This is here reflected and this again goes on. So, there are again two reflections. 
So, in the generally this is a rarer and this is a denser because this is the rarer medium means we are seeing in in air this is air medium generally. So, from air to any film it is goes on this becomes denser. So, this is there is no phase shift of pi here and here also this light this light simply goes on there is no reflection from here. So, there is no phase shift of any of the path between these and this ray. So, during here and here in the entire process from he here to here there is no phase shift. So, now you see here that this geometrical path difference is delta x is given as 2 n t cos r this angle is r this is r. So, this is again cos r this is the path difference the, this part difference and this this length and this length is same. So, we have 2 n t cos r. So, if delta x is 2 n t cos r is equal to m lambda then constructive interference interference takes place and if delta x is equal to 2 n t cos r is equal to 2 m plus 1 lambda by 2 then destructive interference takes place. So, this is the case here I have assumed that this is suppose this is air this is air and this is air if we are going to see from this end. So, this is air. So, there is no phase shift of pi here no phase shift no phase shift and here also no phase shift. So, generally when we observe here this is air, but however, if we are observing it from a medium which itself is a denser medium. So, during this wave there is a phase shift of pi, but here there is no phase shift of pi and reverse will take place reverse means here there will be a minima and here there will be a maxima. This is how the interference in transmitted light takes place and reflected light takes place.